we're going to show you the basics of hooking up in a caravan park here in Australia. And we're going to start with the electric. Now, this is a standard electric cord that every single camper van we've seen uses. There's no such thing as 20, 30, or 50 amp electric here, and that's because the entire network runs on 240 volts instead of 120 like in North America. So I want to show you what the plugs look like here. That's a standard 15 amp, 240 volt plug. And this is what everyone uses here, and it's all we need. And it's a lot thinner than the ones in North America, and a lot easier to handle as a result. So what we're going to do is take the female end of that, flip this flap up right here, and connect this like so. Now we're going to take the rest of this cord lay it out here and you'll notice the length of the cord makes it so there's no extension cord needed. We have not had a problem connecting anywhere and that's even when the pedestals are like this. This is a four outlet pedestal that serves all four of the sites around it. This is real typical to have them up like this, sometimes they're lower down, but it's real common to have a gang like this for multiple people because everybody's cords are so long they can all reach. Now the other thing about the electric system here is that the standard way of doing things here for switches is that up is off and down is on. It's exactly the opposite of the way we're used to in North America. This happens to be the very first pedestal we've seen that is just like we're used to in that down is off and up is on. Every other one we've seen that's true in buildings, whether you're in someone's house or in uh, the bathrooms here in the caravan park, down is always on for electric outlets and for lights. But this one is like North America. This switch is down right now and it's off. So we're just going to plug this in, flip the switch up, and we're all set to go. We're going to fill up our freshwater tank with this freshwater hose. It's a gravity fill, which is common in North America, but it seems to be mostly what we've seen here. We know that some people have the ability to connect directly up to the campground water source and not use their water pump, but it appears that most people don't have that ability, and that includes us. We are simply going to put fresh water into the tank through this gravity feed. So we need a key to get into our water here. And all we need to do is stick the hose very little bit in here and we're going to turn on the water a little bit. We don't want to put it in too fast because it could cause an air bubble to get in the line and prevent it from filling up all the way. So let's go turn the water on. Not too much. As soon as the water starts coming out, you're full, shut it off. Okay. So now remove your water hose, put your water cap back on, and you're good to go. Now we're going to dump our gray water, which is a completely separate task from dumping black water. Those two systems are not connected in any way in camper vans here in Australia. It's more like in Europe, where the toilet has a cassette system and the gray water is completely separate by itself. That's why the diameter of this hose is so much smaller. It doesn't need to carry solids, just water from the sink and the shower. So here's how we're going to hook it up here. Let me show you the connection point on here. This is a bayonet type mount similar to what they use for fuel trucks in North America. It's a very positive action, but again, you can see the diameter is extremely small. So here's how we hook it up. If you're not sure where the gray water outlet is on your camper van, look for this emblem to let you know. Here's where we're going to connect our hose, and this is the valve we're going to open to let the gray water out. So we'll take our hose, flip these two tabs upward, slip it up on, and pull down on each of the tabs. Once your gray hose is connected to the valve, you can see the end of this doesn't have any kind of an attachment point to go into the ground with a firm connection like you might be used to in the States or in Canada. This is not going to be firmly connected to a sewer line. And actually, 
you may not even be able to dump at your site. If you don't have a place to dump at your site, you'll need to take your gray water and go over to the black tank dump. That is a completely separate facility that we'll show you in a minute. But we happen to have a spot here where we can dump gray water right on the site. So even though this site has electric water and sewer, it's not really a full hookup. We can put gray water down here and we have water available to us, but we can't screw into it. We cannot put black water down here. Toilet water cannot go down this drain. This is simply for gray water. And all we're gonna do is lay this hose right here. Now let's open up our gray valve all the way. You can see that this small gray water hose doesn't empty the tank particularly quickly, but it gets the job done. Once the water's completely drained out, close your gray valve. And flip up the two tabs and disconnect your hose. If you have water available, rinse out your hose. Now we know a lot of people don't think that gray water needs to be rinsed out of the hose, but we've RV'd long enough to know that gray water can smell as bad as black water, and with this hose sitting inside the camper van, we'd rather have it rinsed out. Now you can probably tell because I have gloves on that I'm getting ready to show you how to dump the black tank. Now over here, it's a different system completely. It's the thing about RVing here, or caravanning, that is maybe the most different when it comes to standard systems and hookups. You cannot hook your black tank up to a sewer line here. It's completely separate. It's its own independent system, and it's called a cassette system or a cassette toilet. And all of them are very standardized. This hatch right here is where the toilet gets dumped from. Whenever you see a caravan in uh, Australia and you want to know where the bathroom is, look for this door because the toilet is right above that every time. Here's how it works. We open this door up, and if you look inside, you're gonna see a very specialized system in here. This is standardized throughout the RV industry here. And this is the guts of the cassette toilet. Everything is right in here, and we're going to empty it right from here. We don't even have to take the camper van over to the dump point. We're simply gonna remove this system and do it here. Okay, right down here at the very bottom is a little tab. We're going to push up on that tab and pull the cassette right out of the side of the van. And this is our black tank. And the reason that we don't have to take the RV over to the dump point is because we're gonna take the tank. And here's how it's done. Simply lift it out. We can close that while we're gone. And watch how smart they are with the design of this. Got a handle on one end and wheels on the other so if you've got a long way to go to get to the dump you can drag it that way if it's too full and you're not too strong no big deal just follow me out you so there are pros and cons to having a cassette system the pro is that you don't have to bring the camper van over here to dump it the con is obviously it's a small tank and it has to be dumped more often now some people bring their camper vans right over here and dump right here we didn't want to bother to move, so we brought the cassette right here to the dump point. This is exactly what almost every dump point we've seen looks like. Here's how we dump a cassette. Rotate the neck around. Take the cap off. And we're going to tip this in there and at the same time, we're gonna push this green button on this end, which is gonna allow air to flow through so that it will all flow smoothly out. Here's all we do. Okay, now we're gonna put the cap back in. Turn this knob to open the lid. And we're going to put a little bit of water down inside the tank so that we can 
flush it out. Okay, let's close the lid again. Give that a good shake. Same thing all over again. Dump it upside down and push the button. Okay, and just for good measure, we always do a second rinse out. Same thing again. Just put enough water to get it rinsed out. Second time. Close the top. Okay, now we're going to take the hose and just like in North America, we're going to rinse everything off. Clean the area down. Close that down. Turn this back in like that. We now have a clean empty cassette to put back inside the camper van. The last thing we're going to do before we put the cassette in place is we're going to put in a packet of deodorizer. So turn the top, whoop, drop that in. It shouldn't be leaking like that, but it's okay. And open this up, wheel it in, and that snaps right into place. Now a couple of things about the system here. If you go to remove the cassette, by lifting up on this handle right here, and you pull, and it won't go. Don't force it. There's a safety on there that prevents the cassette from coming out if the toilet valve is open. So close the toilet valve and try again, because that's almost certainly the problem. This cassette will not come out with the toilet open. Secondly, right in here we have a tube with water in it. And right now it's about two-thirds to three-quarters of the way up that tube. That shows you the level of water in the toilet flush system. It's an independent system for the toilet with its own fresh water supply, so the two systems never connect at all. If the water level is low in the toilet flush system, we add it by swinging out this arm right here, unscrewing the top, and filling with fresh water right through here. Don't put any toilet chemical in there this is strictly for fresh water, nothing else. And all you need to do is put water in here until the water level reaches the top. Close this back up, spin that closed, and your tank is dumped.